Hey guys, this is just going to be a fairly standard rectilinear motion problem. So we've got a particle here moving along a straight line, and it decelerates according to this equation. Your acceleration is equal to minus kV. In fact, let me make that clear. Acceleration is equal to minus kV, where k is a constant and v is the velocity in meters per second. We're given a few boundary conditions too. We're told that at time t is equal to zero, your velocity is equal to four meters per second. We're also told that at time t is equal to two seconds, v is equal to one meters per second, right? And lastly, we're asked to find out the time and the corresponding distance when your velocity is one-tenth of its initial value, basically when your velocity is 0 0.4 meters per second, right? Now before we get into solving this particular problem, let's try and not view this as a whole bunch of random equations and numbers on a page. Let's try and have a practical understanding of what's going on. So rather than say we've got a particle here, let's instead say we've got a runner just here, and it's running along a particular track like this, right? And let's say when he starts, and this is his starting position, this is x, this is y, t is equal to 0 and v is equal to 4 meters per second. So it's an instant acceleration. It's a, it's, it's a unit step. It jumps to 4 meters per second, so it's instant start. And then two seconds later, he's slowed down quite a bit. He's, he's, he's around over here, and he's slowed down a little bit. In fact, by 3 meters per second, right? So um, he's slowing down as he's running. This is a very obese sprinter, and he's slowing down as the time increases, and we're asked to find out what the time is and what the corresponding um, distance is when your velocity is this value. Now how do I know he's slowing down? That's because we're given this equation. Your acceleration is equal to minus kV. Your acceleration is always going to be negative for all positive values of v. So basically he's decelerating all the time, right, as long as your velocity is positive. Right? Okay, so now that we've got that sorted, let's see if we can actually start solving this particular problem. And we solve it by keeping track of two main formulas. One is going to be your acceleration is going to be equal to dv dt, and another one is going to be your velocity is going to be equal to dx dt just here. Okay, so let's see if we can apply these two formulas to solve our problem. Well, we know that our acceleration was given as minus kv. We know it's um, proportional to your velocity, and we know that this is going to be equal to dv dt. <clears throat> We're given this in the equation. This is just subbing stuff in now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by dt, and I'm going to be left with minus kv dt is going to be equal to dv, right? Remember, v is your velocity of your sprinter, or your particle, at any time, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide um, both sides by velocity to get velocities on the right-hand side, and we'll be left with minus k dt is going to be equal to 1 on v dv. Now I'm going to integ integrate both sides, and I'll just do that in one step, and this is what we're left with. Um, I'm just going to move everything over to this side now. I don't want to scroll down any further. And how do we evaluate this integral? It's a little bit interesting. The left-hand side's surprisingly simple. Because k is a constant, we can just factorize that outside the integral sign, and we're left with minus k t. Easy enough, that's the left-hand side sorted. What about the right-hand side? Well, recall that the integral of 1 on x dx is actually log x. So in this case, your answer is just going to be log v. That is your answer. That is the equation which describes your velocity with respect to time. That's once we use this formula just here. So this is our equation. But it's not too useful yet. For starters, we know we have an integrational constant out here, c. I forgot to add that earlier. Sorry, there's an integrational constant here, c. And we need to figure that out. And we also need to figure out this um, proportionality constant, k, as well. So in order to do that, we need to use boundary conditions. So let's do that. We know there's two boundary conditions we can use. We know when t is equal to 0, v is equal to 4 meters per second. So let's plug that in. Well, we know 0 amounts to the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? That's log of 4 plus c. That means c is just going to be equal to minus log 4 once you take that over to the other side, meaning that your equation now becomes minus kt is actually equal to log v minus log of 4, right? And don't forget, log is your natural logarithm, so don't mistake that for log base 10 on your calculator. Don't also forget that due to log laws, when you subtract logs, that's like dividing the stuff in the middle. So we can actually write this as minus kt is equal to log of v on 4. I hope you remember that from high school. So that is a slightly more simplified version of our velocity time equation. 
right? But we've still got this pesky um, proportionality constant, k, here. We need to figure that out. So in order to do that, we need to plug in the other boundary condition. That's why they give us this. We need to plug in this just here, right? So let's plug in when t is equal to 2, v is equal to 1. So when t is equal to 2 seconds, v is equal to 1 meters per second, right? And so let's plug that in. We know minus k times 2 is equal to log, natural log, of 1 on 4. Plugging that in now, you can say, um, and I'll trust you to figure that out in your calculator, k is going to be equal to 0 0.693. Now, if I put this down in my test, I would probably get half a mark off. That's because I haven't put the units down to the right-hand side of this equation. I need to mention that this is 0 0.693 of some unit. I don't know what unit it is yet, so let's figure it out. Well, we know that your acceleration is equal to minus kv, right? So let's get um, k by itself, and we know k is actually going to be acceleration minus acceleration on v, right? Well, acceleration is terms of meters per second squared, and velocity is in terms of meters per second. So let's see what cancels out. Well, the meters cancel out. The seconds cancel out. In fact, let me just uh, simplify that down to It's going to be meters per second squared times by the inverse of this, which is seconds on meters. Meters cancel out. Bam, bam. Seconds cancel out. Bam, bam. Leaving us with one solution. K must be in terms of inverse seconds, or second to the minus one, if you like. So that is our answer for K. That is our proportionality constant, which we just figured out, right? Now we're ready to completely solve this problem. We can plug this into this equation now, and let's zoom down a little bit. We know that our final fully simplified equation which describes our motion is 0 minus 0.693t is going to be equal to log of v on 4. That is the equation which describes the motion, well I should say the velocity, um, with respect to time. Okay? All right. Let's see. So now we need to find out x and t. We need to find out x and t when v is equal to 0 0.4. So let's do that. Let's write that down here. What is x equal to and time equal to when your velocity is equal to 0 0.4 meters per second? Okay. Well, we can figure out time. Distance is going to be a little bit tough. We'll sort that out later. Let's get time. Um, by itself. So we know t is actually going to be equal to um, uh, minus 1 on k log of v on 4, right? And uh, I, I put the k back in here, but I'm just going to re-express it just now. And when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to be minus 1 on 0 0.693 times by log of 0 0.4 over 4, which evaluates into evaluates into 3.32 seconds. That is your time which you're after. That is your time when your velocity is equal to 0 0.4 meters per second. That is your answer. Let me just do it in a different color so I can really make it stand out. That is your answer. Okay. Now we're asked to find out what the um, distance is at that corresponding time as well and coincidentally also at this corresponding velocity. What is that? Okay, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We need to get a new formula. We need to use dv dt is equal, sorry, dx dt, dx dt is equal to v, right? Which means that we need to solve for x is equal to the integral of v dt. So let's get v by itself in this equation. We know um, once we um, exponent both sides, we're left with e to the power of minus kt is equal to v on 4, that's once you e both sides, and that's uh, v now is equal to 4e to the minus kt. So far, so good. We can use this now to solve this equation. x is equal to the integral of 4e to the minus kt dt, and once we solve that, we're left with x is equal to, let's see, it'll be, um, I'm not sure if you remember this, but if you integrate, um, if you integrate e to the minus kt, that's essentially just like doing this, 4 times 1 on minus k e to the minus kt plus c. That's a little bit practice of your integrational skills. That's why I chose this problem, actually. It's a, it's a huge retest of what you've already forgotten in your high school math class. 
Anyway, so this is this is a formula expressing x just here, but we've got this pesky integrational constant here again. Let's use boundary conditions to solve it. We know that when t is equal to zero, x is equal to zero. That's when we started our experiment. So let's plug that in. We know zero is equal to four times one on minus k e to the minus kt, which is one when t is equal to zero plus c, meaning that c now c must be equal to, what is it evaluated into? That'll be uh, 4 on k, right? Once you cancel off the minuses. So that's that's your c value, meaning that x must simplify down to, uh, sorry, yeah, x must simplify down to 4 on minus 4 on k e to the minus kt plus 4 on k. We can factor out the 4 on k, and what we're left with is x is equal to 4 on k times by 1 minus e to the minus kt. Whew, I bet you didn't see that coming at the start of this problem. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to solve for x when t is equal to the value we just figured out. Remember, we just figured out that t is equal to 3.32 seconds. So when you plug that in, when you plug that in, you're going to be left with x is equal to 5.19 meters. That is your that is your solution. Let me highlight that again. That is your solution. Okay, guys, that was a pretty tough problem, only because it tested a lot of mathematical skills. It tested your integration, it tested differentiation, um, and you just really had to, I guess, stick with it. I hope that made sense.